we'll just kind of start doing this. Um, Greta, uh, you and I are sitting at the library uh, here. There may be some background noise that we we pick up, but uh, we just wanted to talk a little bit to each other about um, how both of us came to the idea of doing uh, a daily devotional podcast um, for the church. And uh, I think uh, it was, we consider it um, something of a minor miracle anyway, that both of us had the same idea at the same time and had never talked to each other about it. Um, so why don't you talk about how, what you were thinking about when, when all this came to you? Okay, I'd be glad to. Um, well, this started for me probably just with an interest in um, learning about and reflecting on Scripture. And um, I have for a long time journaled, kind of done uh, my own devotionals. Um, and at, in my journey to being um, uh, becoming a deacon in the Methodist Church, um, and now that I'm provisional deacon, as that was coming up, I was thinking about, okay, well, how will I serve? What kind of ministry uh, will I do? And I've always felt sort of led, uh, moved towards this writing and sharing of devotions. And I had talked to a Sunday school class probably over a year ago in which somebody um, came up to me afterwards and asked, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? And I really hadn't, um, but it sparked something inside of me and took me a long time thinking about it um, as I was going through this process of uh, getting uh, commissioned in the church. I just kept going back to that idea, but it seemed so out of my league, so out of my comfort zone. I know nothing about podcasting. Um, I was thinking, how could I possibly do this? I was, you know, certainly thinking like that it would be me figuring out how to do a podcast. Um, But what's so interesting to me is that all along, I thought, what I really, what I feel so passionate about is, particularly as a United Methodist, is sharing our Methodist heritage and um, Wesley's emphasis on grace and really wanting to see a return to that um, focus on the grace of God as a way of just breathing new life Mm -hmm. into the church that has been struggling over COVID and and everything else that's going on. So anyway, finally, um, I got up my nerve to just step out in faith and uh, talk to Sarah a little bit after church one day about this idea. And I mean, you know, she was interested. Um, I thought, okay, I've taken this first step. Uh, Later that week or the next week, I went ahead and sent Jonathan an email um, saying, this is what I've been thinking about, really expecting, like, how on earth, right? (laughs) How on earth would you even think about doing um, a podcast? And got his email back saying that, just that within that week or the week before that he had had the same conversation with you, that you had approached him about this. And what was so moving to me about that is there was a grace moment, right? Like I really was thinking about this opportunity to share, you know, grace moments and evidence of God's grace at work in our lives. And that was such a grace moment to me to learn that you had all of this knowledge and experience (laughs) and that it wasn't something like God had gone before, right? It wasn't something that I, what was I thinking that I would have to figure out how to do this on my own? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, we don't know where, you know, what seeds have been planted Mm -hmm. um, before us. uh, And, and that's one of the, that's one of the wonderful things about, uh, about following um, 
the the spirit is as we believe it leads us uh, is that uh, there are things that are happening out there that we have no idea about. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I I, um, love about our faith is that um, there's always a surprise Mm -hmm. there. There's always something out there that, you know, we say, whoa, wait a minute. Um, When, um, as I have been involved in the church, I've understood, uh, particularly with First Church, um, more and more uh, how what a strong church that is in terms of the resources that it, it's had. And in my professional life, I'd always been, for the past 20 to 30 years, I've been very interested <laughs> in um, what what online means and what, what the technology means. Uh, is able to do. And so I began to think about that in terms of the church. And when COVID hit, um, I really thought our church did a good job in, in even though we had to close our doors, we kind of opened up the online doors and we did, I thought, just a superior job. My disappointment was that when we opened up our physical doors again, a lot of that got shut down, and and I happened to be, as I told you before, on the pastor staff parish um, committee, and I would say stuff to Jonathan every once in a while about, you know, we need to we need to do more online and and that sort of thing. Well, then last year when Jonathan put out the call for. Um, Lenten devotionals, uh, and he asked me to write one, and and forty or fifty other people, mm-hmm. and so I wrote mine, and I thought, okay, that's great. And then they, we got an email every day, mm-hmm. and I began to read those, and I thought, this is fantastic. These are people who are, who are not trained as in seminary or ministry, but, you know, who have really um, thought deeply, have a lot of times original thoughts about um, about their scriptures and things that I had not considered before. And at some point, you know, I said, these would make, if we did audios of these, these would make great podcasts. Um, and then... Jonathan put out a call again and said, church is going to have three areas this year where yeah. we're going to, we're going to try to emphasize those. And, um, and I think one was hospitality and one was youth and the other was online. And so I was you know, a little bit like you. I said, when he said online, and I thought, okay, when is this email coming? And finally the email showed up that said, we want some ideas. And I thought, okay, if you're, you know, you've been punching at this for a little while, now is the time to step up. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I knew something about a podcast because I had produced one before. Um, and so I thought, well, Okay, um, now is the time to present this idea. So I emailed Jonathan. I said, I have this idea. Um, can I come and talk to you about it? And so um, we did. We had, I went, chatted with him probably an hour or so. I said, I really think this can work. I said, I looked at these um, Linton devotionals. I think those, could become podcast, you know, we could do this. This church has the resources to do this. Uh, We talked about money, you know, how much would it cost to do this? And I I didn't know, but I thought it's one thing I kind of prepared for in the conversation. I tried to figure out what it would cost so I could at least have a figure. And we had a, you know, I had a figure and John is very reasonable figure. We can do that. And, um, so 
we kind of left it there. And, and he, I, I, he, he basically said, go back and think about it some more, see how, you know, give it, you know, let it develop. Well, then within a couple of weeks, apparently your Mm -hmm. email showed up and he, forwarded that to me and he said, I can't believe this, that two of you were, <laughs> were doing this at the same time. I said, do you know Greta? I don't know Greta. Um, and uh, so he said, well, we have to get all three of you. We have to get the three of us together. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's where that's where we came to this. Um, and I will say this is just working with you, um, Greta, has been an absolute joy. Well, uh, It has been such a blessing to me, and I I had forgotten. I'm glad you brought up the the three areas of ministry of the church because that really was, for me also, the aha moment to say. And I think it's really interesting, like that God, that's the Holy Spirit, uh, the movement of the Holy Spirit too, right? Like God had placed this on my heart and on your heart, and then also at work in Mm -hmm. this. Um, kind of planning within the church of these three areas of um, focus in ministry. And so when that was one of them, I thought, okay, there it is. It's time to take, you know, some action yeah. on this and yeah. see what the opportunities uh, might be. So, well, I think as we um, venture on here, um, this has, as we have discussed, uh, lots of possibilities. If we, if we do, um, if we can pull this off, this, and I think we will. Um, if we, if we do a daily podcast that goes out from First Church, First United Methodist Church in Maryville, Tennessee, instantly, as we have discussed before, we will have a worldwide reach. Mm. We don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. after that. We think a lot of good things will happen. Um, and um, we don't know where this will lead. Um, what I think we, each of us, have envisioned is there are other things that could fit into this to what they call a podcast network, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that it wouldn't just be the daily devotionals, but there would be other. And every time I talk to somebody about this, you know, and get them to thinking about it, uh, you, Jonathan, my wife, everybody says, well, yeah, you know, you could do something about, you know, that's not the daily devotional podcast. (laughs) Um, And so I just think there are, you know, once we uh, light the spark on this, Mm-hmm. Um, there are just lots of ideas out there, lots mm-hmm. of people who could say, yeah, let's, let's try this or let's try that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm really excited about that. Yes. I I think what, even you saying that just reminds me, Jim, of some of the conversations we've had, too, about how this is a um, mm-hmm. it's an exciting idea because of our Methodist heritage also right. in um uh, the just this bringing the the gospel outside mm-hmm. of the church walls and mm-hmm. into the world and um and it's a whole new area of ministry for right. our church and it feels like this is just the beginning. Well, it's new and of course, as you well know from from your knowledge of history, it's very old yes. too. Yes. Um, and and that's really what set John Wesley apart is that he went outside the walls of the church. Uh, he didn't he didn't want to, to uh, but he took that he took that step um, and and discovered there was there was a congregation out there that was not being served. Um, and uh, I just you know he Wesley and George Whitfield, you know, had their voices. And I, I mentioned to Jonathan one day, what if Wesley had had a microphone? You know, what, what would have happened then? So um, I think God has given us a microphone. Mm-hmm. And so 
Uh, I, I hope that microphone will be um, blessed as we try to use it. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. I'm Jonathan Jonas, the senior pastor of First United Methodist Church. Our church is a vital, vibrant congregation sharing the love and grace of Jesus Christ in Maryville, Tennessee, and now wherever podcasts are available. This podcast is written and produced by the members of our congregation. To know more about this ministry or any of our church's ministries, please visit our website at firstchurch.org. That's the number one, S-T-C-H-U-R-C-H dot O-R-G. Join us again for the next episode. And until then, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.